Last year when I was getting all that pushback online, everybody was calling me a pansy. I made sure to plant a lot of pansies up here. <laughs> and they grew really well. I want to talk about a bridge between the institutional church and the LGBT Catholic community. Now some Catholics object to this, which is putting it mildly. One US bishop has criticized you very strongly, saying you're part of an LGBT lobby within the church. It's amazing the number of people who want to argue with Jesus on Twitter, <laughs> even if you quote them. We believe homosexual activity is immoral. I don't know what the cross is if you're Father Martin and the whole gay thing. Where's the suffering? Where's the sacrifice? One time I was at mass and I started having a panic attack. It just felt so unaccepting. People want to be angry that someone is gay doesn't make any sense. Why are issues of sexuality such a flashpoint for contention? In terms of controversial topics, this would probably be the most controversial. My brothers and sisters, never underestimate the pain that LGBT people have experienced at the hands of our own church. This is all part of the great gaying of the church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. The Catholic Church really should have done so much more. This is civil war, Catholic gay civil war for the soul of the church. I always want to be close to Jesus. That's why I'm doing all this. Here comes the sun. Where's our rainbow? <laughs> and thank you, uh, Father. Oh, I'll say it on, I can say it on the, on the actual, officially. Thank you, Father, for, for putting on your collar. collar. For the, my, for the, my pleasure, my pleasure. Um, appreciate it. And it's, it's nice to, to, to meet you both. Um, we have uh, Evan uh, Mascani, as we, or Mascani, if you are a, a purist. Or Miscagney, if you're from Kentucky. Or if you're from Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Father James Martin, uh, do you, is it Father Jim to your to your parishioners and your friends, or how's that work? Yeah, that's fine. Father Jim or Jim, I mean, either way. Okay, thank you. And um, you can just call me Adam. <laughs> Great. Well, then you can call me Jim. So thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure. As I said, it was also a pleasure to see the documentary. I had a feeling I was going to like it, and that. It, or more than like it, that it was going to have an effect on me, and it did. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful, and I'm grateful that it worked out. We're sorry to miss uh, Evan's co-director, Shannon, but we'll be thinking of her today. Uh, uh, and um, the film, let me just get out of the way some business. One thing is the documentary is called Building a Bridge, uh, how the Catholic Church and LGBT community can enter into a relationship of respect. No, that's the book's title. You, you wisely call this film building a bridge and leave it at that. But I'm, it's it's based or it's inspired from the book that Father or Jim wrote, uh, which I was trying to uh, articulate. Um, and it's currently on VOD, but it's going to have um, a, um, a premiere, streaming premiere on AMC Plus on June 21st and a broadcast premiere on Sundance TV on June 26th. Whew. It's a. Uh, that's Pride Month, I understand, just so happens. So we hear. <laughs> also, June 21st is the Feast of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, a Jesuit saint, so also a big day for us Jesuits. Right, you're a Jesuit. Pri. I, I should have mentioned Jesuit, that as well. Right. That's okay. Um, That's okay. And, well, to explain first, I don't want to spend too much time on this, obviously, but uh, how the Jesuit order, uh, uh, I think like Fordham University, for instance, up in New York City is a Jesuit, right? It has its mm -hmm. roots in That's Jesuit, correct. Mm -hmm. the Jesuit college. Mm -hmm. What is the, what is a distinction about the Jesuit uh, priesthood? Yeah, sure. So we're a Catholic religious order. So we're Catholic priests. Uh, we're a religious order like the Franciscans or Benedictines or Dominicans, which means we live in community. We take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. In the States, we're probably best known for our uh, colleges and um, universities and high schools. So the big ones would be Boston College, Georgetown, Fordham, as you say. And then the, the other joke is, you know, for our basketball uh, prowess, which is like Gonzaga, Xavier, 
et cetera. <laughs> I, oh, right. Xavier. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, I just want to read a message here. Okay. Um, and um, very good. Um, let me recalibrate my, I just want to try to remember what I was going to start off with saying, okay, here's where I want First of all, I want to know from Evan, like, did you, were you familiar with the, with, with, with Jim's book? Is that what started this for you? Um, how, how did you come across Father Jim? Uh, yeah, so I was not familiar with his work um, at the time. I'm, I'm from a very Catholic community in Kentucky. I sometimes joke I didn't even know there were other religions growing up besides Catholicism. Um, and, you know, when I got to college, like a lot of young people, I, I sort of distanced myself from the church and stopped being, an, you know, an active Catholic. And my mom constantly always is trying to, you know, send me things about, oh, you know, there's good people in the church doing great things and sending me voices. And when I moved to New York, um, she kept telling me about this cool priest she follows on Instagram and uh, <laughs> turned out to be Father Martin. And um, she just kept begging me to go to one of his talks. And finally, I was like, OK, I'll just go. And I went and I was really sort of blown away what I saw. It was very different from the Catholic church that I experienced growing up. Right. And, and then. I began to see uh, Jim and I agreed on a lot of issues, right? Um, LGBTQ people, immigrants, refugees, all of these things that were important to him were also important to me. So I, uh, I came back to Shannon and Shannon and I had co-directed one documentary prior to that and, and said, you know, there's a story here. And um, yeah, so that's how it sort of all got started. Uh, and, and Jim, I wrote here, I'm going back further to the uh, I, at the beginning. I started to tell the title or say the title of the book from which this uh, documentary is, let's say, an extension of or adjacent mm, sure, inspired to. Inspired by, sure. Inspired by. Adjacent to. I love that. That's great. <laughs> um, and, but even going back before that, what inspired the book. I wrote down here what politicized or what, when you got politicized and I crossed it out because what I was, um, I thought a better way of putting it and you can respond to this is that you were the Pulse nightclub shooting activated you. Yeah, that's a great word, activated or inspired. Uh, I had done work with LGBTQ people before, but never in a kind of formal way. I mean, you know, I have LGBTQ friends in New York and people that come to the parish, and I'd written about them in America Magazine, where I work. Um, but it was the Pulse nightclub massacre, and specifically the lack of response from the U.S. bishops, which really shocked me. And I just thought that the lack of, I mean, maybe a handful of bishops said anything about the largest mass shooting in U.S. history at that time. And I just thought, boy, even in death, this community is invisible to the church. And so I stepped out a little bit. I did a Facebook video that uh, went viral. Um, that used to be a good thing before COVID. You could say go viral. Um, and uh, then that led to the book and that led to the ministry. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad that the, that the movie is called Building a Bridge because I think, uh, you know, it, it, it fits with the book. And certainly the publisher's happy. <laughs> and I think, you know, a thousand <laughs> times more people will see the movie than, than have ever read the book. And I'm sure Evan is <laughs> certainly hoping so as well. Uh, what, what kind of conversations did you guys have going into the production? Evan uh, well, or Jim? Go ahead, go ahead Jim. You had no, Jim. Go ahead. You're going to say something. Please go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I mean, as Evan was saying, we we were of like mind, and uh, I mean, I think I can say this. We hit it off, and we we're he's a very nice guy, and I felt very comfortable around him. And I thought, hey, I don't know where this is going. Um, I've had people come up to me before and ask. About documentaries and you know profiles and things like that and sometimes they don't go anywhere and i i've told this story before it wasn't until i went to the world meeting of families in dublin to give a talk for the vatican which is in the uh, film which is in the film that evan and uh his team said we're coming for and i said why are you coming to dublin i really was shocked and he said we're making a documentary <laughs> and i said oh i guess this is going to be like a real documentary um and i just thought i saw the care that they took with um you know, with their research. And I, what I especially mm -hmm. like about the documentary is the multiplicity of voices in here. You know, it's not just the Jim Martin show, which I would have been embarrassed by. It's, it's all these wonderful LGBTQ Catholics and people who minister to them and families. And it's, it's a real, it's a real kind of um, portrait of, of the church, you know, in all of its diversity. And Evan, were you were concerned about 
the tone of the film, because as already Jim alluded to, it could be embarrassing, right? If it becomes a too, too heavy on the promotional side, especially it's a sensitive thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, there were a lot of concerns going into it, and, and especially because so Shannon, who co-directed the film with me, is a queer woman, and she attended or used to go to Pulse nightclub a lot when she attended college in Florida, and actually had a, had a friend who was killed there. So, oh dear, it's a story that was very important and personal to her, and and we wanted to make sure we, um, you know, were able to tie in Jim's message and his story of what came out of the Pulse nightclub shooting and do it in a way that was, you know, sensitive and respectful to, to everyone on, on, on all sides of this. Right. What well, went into the decision to also, um, uh, I guess, put, um, and now I have to, is it Jim? What, what, no, what's the other? Michael Voris. Michael Voris. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to, uh, forget maybe I'm intentionally trying to forget him uh, actually he's a complicated person a very complicated individual and and I don't know Jim if if you how much you show a remarkable amount of um, humanity towards him even though you two guys are never in the same scene but he is quite evidently this adversary or set up as like almost an adversary yeah and it's not it's 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 not a and I know you're not implying this, but it's not an artificial thing for the film. I mean, he really is completely oh, yeah. against what I'm doing. And uh, I, you know, I, I was once, I can use this word, accosted by him in Vatican City when I was over there. And, uh, you know, he was, he's pretty, he's pretty, uh, you know, direct and blunt. And I would say, you know, some of the things he says are really hateful and homophobic. And I think it's good that he's in there because... You know, hmm. it, it gives, uh, in a sense, the opposition their their day in court. You know, he has a lot of time on camera to explain what he thinks. And good point. Pe people can make their decision. And you can't say, oh, you know, the filmmakers were just slanting this. It's very clear, you know, what he's saying. And people can make up their minds. But, you know, obviously, I disagree with pr pretty much everything he says about <laughs> LGBTQ people. He doesn't even use that phrase. I think he says same-sex attracted still. So, hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, uh, it's fair. It's a fair portrayal of him and, and a fair portrayal of, you know, a lot of the a lot of the attacks I've been getting over the past couple of years. Yeah, Evan, to your credit, um, and Shannon's, of course, I, I, you almost half expect there to be a moment in the film where, where uh, Michael, um, that's his name, right, Michael? Michael Voris, yeah. Voris is, you know, where he kind of, for lack of a better term, gets a comeuppance of sorts, and it just doesn't happen quite so, it's not quite so clear cut, you know. Uh, that That's a, in a way, for me, a great filmmaking right there, you know, uh, just that the struggle continues, you know, um, and um, it's a comp it's a it's complicated. It's not just uh, and 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 it doesn't sit feel judgmental uh, too much. I mean, well, <laughs> you know, I still judge him, but, you know, uh, I can say that, you know, I'm not a journalist. Uh, I can say that. Uh, so but the film avoids What's the word polemicism, I suppose? I don't know. Uh, Evan, what was your feeling about that, Michael, because he plays such a big part in the film? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, especially following in real time something happening, like Jim writing this book and then going on this book tour, we're just kind of following the story. And um, we saw in real time the actual effect that uh, Boris and Church Militant and others were having on, you know, getting Jim's talks canceled, um, you know, spamming his social media, writing all of these petitions. And it just felt like, you know, he was having real impact on Jim's ministry. And so, of course, we felt like we had to include it in the film um, as, as part of the story of, of, of the book, Building a Bridge and, and Jim's LGBTQ ministry that followed it. Well, uh, you know, there's historically feels like Catholicism and and the LGBT community uh, are at opposite uh, um, opposite sides or ends of uh, some spectrum for some reason. And obviously the book, the film is trying to do exactly what it says. It's trying to build the bridge. And um, well, there's a, one favorite Catholic or one famous, not favorite, fa well, favorite too, famous Catholic who uh, is is not in the film, but he's an executive producer on the film. And of course, people are going to be curious how you you got Marty aboard, how that happened. 
I have to ask about that as yeah, a film guy. Of course. Um, his team got word that we were following around Jim and making this documentary and uh, reached out and we were put in touch and they, they wanted to see a rough cut of the film and, and, and we sent it over and um, we spoke with, with him. He called and, and we had a great conversation and he gave us some uh, feedback and suggestions oh, and creative input. He called. He just called, you know, walking down this Madison <laughs> And I missed Avenue the call window. because I thought it was spam. <laughs> but uh, then I got an email from someone on his team. It was like, uh, hey, Evan, we've got Marty on the line. Just tried to get a hold of you. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. If I <laughs> Luckily, it all worked out, though. And yeah, I mean, um, obviously, we're super honored and grateful to have yeah. uh, his support and, and name behind the film. But that's How early I'm was he on board? Oh, yeah. So we were still, you know, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. So we oh, wow. weren't technically finished with production. We actually had a few shoots scheduled in March and then everything just shut down. And we said, all right, let's just let's go into editing mode here. And it, it was very early on in the post process that we, that we uh, started talking with him. And, and uh, I, I, I don't even apply that uh, based on that the quality alone wouldn't have got it into such a great festival premiere, but it did get into the Tribeca Film Festival last year which is an auspicious start to any film and, and for a, a great uh, coup for uh, your team, I'm sure. Yeah, it was awesome. It was actually, you know, June last year, right when everyone had gotten vaccinated and it sort of felt like the, we were turning the corner on the pandemic and it was this outdoor beautiful screening, everyone was celebrating and then Delta came and sort of yeah. put everyone back inside for a little bit. But yeah, it, it was a wonderful premiere. Um, I, I'm going to kind of start to wind it down just because I want to respect your, 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 your time here. And again, thank you both for really for, uh, for, for making time to come on this and uh, appreciate it. It's such a pleasure to meet you both. Thank you. Uh, but here's a personal ish question, Jim. I just, uh, as a priest, you, you grapple. I, I, I have to imagine even with all your enthusiasm and your spirit, you have to grapple with uh, your faith and um, and um, and I wonder if you, uh, you know, if when it comes to this particular issue of uh, trying to create a more healthy relationship, doing your bit to create a re healthier relationship with of compassion and sensitivity uh, between the LGBT community and the, and the church. And I, I think it's more on the church's onus, as you, you said, have said, right? But do, do you feel like you have to sometimes um work on your faith <laughs> yeah. yeah you know it's a great question uh not so much my faith so it doesn't mean okay. that i don't believe in god or i believe no in no less. yeah yeah i know i know i know what you mean on a small f sure faith. yeah right yeah. So that's good i like Lowercase, that um yeah. uh, but it's you know a lot of it's how to respond to some of these things you know where do i go from here um if if i get pushback from even you know say a, a priest or a bishop what's my response you know, in this ministry, it is a lot two steps forward, one step back. And it's right. also, you know, learning to be uh, okay with some of the attacks. And one of the things that has helped me is to look at, you know, Jesus's life, obviously. And I mean, he's our model. I'm not comparing myself to him, but he's our model. And, you know, he didn't let attacks disturb him. He didn't really feel the need for everybody to love, like, or approve of him. Right. And, and so why should I? So there's a little, there's a lot of freedom that's come with just saying, hey, people aren't going to agree with it. Uh, people might be super hateful and really homophobic, and that's that's mostly coming from them. And to just keep on, right? Uh, but yeah, so it's it's mainly kind of what we Jesuits call discernment. You know, what what's my response to this challenge, and and you know, how do we move on, and how do we help people, you know, continue to feel more welcome? And you know, what is after all their church too? Um, the name of the documentary is called Building a Bridge. It's currently on VOD, but it's going to have again to repeat myself it's going to have a streaming premiere at amc on amc plus on june 21st and a broadcast premiere on sundance tv june 26th and um I'm, it's directed by uh, co-directed i should say by evan Mascani and shannon post i think even your mom might have been proud of my pronunciation that time <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my dad, my dad. Your dad, excuse me. <laughs> Executive produced by Martin Scorsese, including in its, among its subjects, Father Jim Martin. And, and Jim, just say, I mean, I'll put this information at the end, but how do people who maybe need to, or might be helped to know more about what you're doing and, and 
um, how to communicate with you? How do they go about doing that? Yeah, I'm, I'm all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. But I think most recently, um, a great way is we've just started up a new website. Okay. LGBTQ Catholics uh, just this week called Outreach. Oh, wow. And it's under outreach.faith. Beautiful. Thank you. And Evan, and uh, your film will be everywhere. So <laughs> that's how people can reach you through. Is there, is there, a, I mean, there's a building of faith also documentary website, right? Building yeah, faith. yeah. Building, building a bridge, bridge, excuse me. Building the film. Bridge film. Yeah, building a bridge film .com. Okay. And we're all over social media too. Right. But. Thank you both. Really, truly nice to meet you both. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for your great questions. Oh, yeah, thank thanks you. Thanks for having us, Adam. Nice Anytime. All right. Have a good day. Okay. All right, Bye -bye. guys. God bless. Take care.